In 1954, Werner von Braun, the father of rocket science, wrote, We have or will acquire the basic knowledge to solve all the physical problems of a manned flight to Mars. And if all goes to plan, that very thing will be happening in the coming years. Here are five things we need to know about the proposed Mars 1 mission to the Red Planet. The plan. So, for those who aren't familiar with the mission, it's being run by Mars One, a Netherlands-based company who by 2025 want to have a permanent human colony on Mars. The company was established by Dutch entrepreneur Bas Lansdorp in 2011. His project has had an increase of media attention lately, due to the fact that the candidates who put their names down have been shortlisted, and in that shortlist of 100 hopeful volunteers, many of them will be taking part in the mission. The first part is scheduled for 2018. A demonstration and communication satellite will be sent to Mars. This communication device will allow around-the-clock communication from Mars to Earth when the humans arrive. It will be followed by a rover in 2020 that will search for the perfect living location for the humans. Then, in 2022, six cargoes are transported to Mars in order to set up the area ready for the astronauts who will depart from Earth in a group of four in 2024 and touch down on Mars in 2025. So that is the project put in place, but the whole thing could fall to pieces. The biggest thing standing in the way is not having the technology or the staff, it's the financial side of things that may prevent the mission. Mars One currently don't have enough money to do the things they want to, despite Bas Lansdorp using a substantial percentage of his wealth for the mission. It will cost around $6 billion. The reason it will not be more is that they will be using existing technology that has the capabilities for Mars travel. So, if the funds come together from donations and possibly other major companies taking part, then Mars One want to successfully put humans on the red planet by 2025. So, who will be going? The amount of people who put their names down for the trip was astonishing. More than 200,000 applicants applied to be taken to the next stage of Mars One's astronaut selection process. Out of all those, only 660 were given online interviews, which allowed them to showcase their enthusiasm to the mission and to be told about the risks involved. Out of those 616 interviews, 50 men and 50 women from all around the world were put forward to the next stage, which will be the intensive training. It seems they will be put in groups of four based on personalities, chemistry and abilities in order for each team to work together in harmony. This means though that if one member for some reason can't take part in the mission or pulls out, the whole group will be pulled and will have to start the process again with a new reserve team member. It's believed that the journey from application to training will be broadcasted on TV in order for the world to pick which group demonstrates they are best suited for the first mission. Now, there was first talk of a reality style show being made, which led many comparing it to programs like Big Brother. The idea of this seems to have been scrapped at the minute and it might be more of a documentary style program. It's also worth knowing that there will always be new selections and several groups in training for future missions, and those who want to take part can apply in 2015 in order to become a part of Mars One. Because don't forget, they want to send groups of four or more every two years, and if all goes well, there doesn't seem to be any reason why they won't keep populating Mars. Candidate Training So, despite the astronauts' role being voluntary, they of course will be paid for full-time training on Earth which consists of three programs, technical training, personal training, and group training. Each member of the team will be trained in different disciplines so that as the population increases on Mars, each new arrival will bring with them an area of expertise. So far, the technical training will help two members in becoming highly trained to repair and use all the equipment that will accompany them on Mars. Two will receive extensive medical training just in case of any illnesses or accidents. One will study Mars geology and one member will be trained in exobiology, which is the biology of alien life. Now, whether they are expecting to find traces of life on Mars or not, it's very interesting that one member will be trained on this particular subject. After that, there will be personal training, which will help prepare them for the living conditions on Mars and help them deal with the fact that they will no longer be able to speak to friends and family on Earth face to face ever again. And the last stage is group training involving simulation missions that will attempt to simulate the exact living conditions on Mars. The groups are believed to spend a few months a year here and will live under the same strict rules they will face on Mars. Applying correct personal equipment, keeping water supplies and life support machines up and running, growing their own food and having a 20 minute delay with all communication from outside the training area are all things the astronauts need to be able to deal with if they are going to end up on Mars. It's believed these bases will be local to start with, but as training progresses, they will be sent to more extreme environments on Earth, from desert terrain to freezing temperatures. Most of this progress should be included in the television documentary or show. 
Once all training is complete, like I said, it's up to us to choose which group will be the first to go. The journey to Mars and the living conditions if they arrive. Since Mars and Earth's orbits are not perfectly circular, the time it will take to arrive could be anywhere from 6 to 8 months, but if they stick to the time schedule, it will take around 7 months to travel there. The four astronauts will travel in the Mars 1 spacecraft, which has less than 20 meters squared of living space per person. Once they arrive on Mars, their living space will be made up of inflatable units, giving around 250 meters squared of living space per astronaut. If, however, one of the inflatable units gets damaged, it will still be fully functional until a new replacement can be sent out. Although many believe Mars is very similar to Earth, the living conditions are far from ours. Mars is a very barren place, and although there are signs that water may have flowed on Mars once, it doesn't appear that there is hardly, if any, water on Mars's surface. Once there, the astronauts can expect temperatures ranging from 20 degrees Celsius at the equator in the summer, right down to minus 153 degrees at the poles in winter. The gravity on Mars is also half as strong as that on Earth. Atmospheric pressure is also less than our planet, and since the air is 95% carbon dioxide, spacesuits will need to be worn at all times. The biggest danger Mars has to offer is the radiation. Radiation on Mars is considerably higher than what Earth receives, so their habitats will be buried under several meters of soil. And if they only spend around one hour a day outside, the radiation levels will not be fatal and will allow them to spend around 60 years on Mars before reaching their astronaut radiation career limit set by ESA standards. One more thing about their living conditions on Mars that has had a lot of media attention is the fact that astronauts are not advised to have intercourse. But so far, this is only for the first few years on Mars, since the conditions up there won't be suitable for children. Mars One know that in order for the project to continue, procreation is a key element for building the population on Mars. But experts predict that due to the high levels of radiation, if pregnancy is even possible in the first place, the chances of birth defects would be considerably high. Although those challenges sound intimidating, Mars One are not going to let them stop the mission and are confident they will overcome all the obstacles the red planet throws at them. The potential outcome. The potential outcome from the mission has mixed reviews. Some believe it will fail before the first spaceship sets off, either due to financial issues or due to the fact that many of the astronauts will not be able to face never returning to Earth if they do go. Experts also say that regardless of the radiation protection put in place, if the astronauts do go, they could still suffer cataracts of the eyes, weakening and damage to the immune and nervous system, and many other nasty side effects, with the possibility they will either die before they get there or shortly after they arrive. The ethics of the mission have also been raised. Is it right to send humans up there without really knowing whether or not they will live or die? Besides all of this, what exactly does Mars One want to achieve out of it? Apart from being a major leap for mankind, they believe their project will help us further understand the origin of the solar system. Maybe they are also expecting to find traces of life up there. The fact one astronaut is being trained in exobiology certainly means they are unsure whether there is or ever has been life on Mars. Even if they find traces of ancient bugs or anything of that sort, that will strengthen the thought that we are not alone in this universe. So that's it. If Mars One acquire enough money to fund the mission, there doesn't seem to be anything standing in their way of starting a new human population on Mars. I would love to hear exactly what you think of the mission. Will it revolutionize our lives? Will the astronauts go mad on the planet? Will there be life up there? Maybe they will find something we can't even imagine. How do you think that it will impact us? Or as the time closes in, do you think the whole mission will be aborted and will be nothing more than a failed attempt to spread the human population? I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.